Hello everybody, Dokkan Assets here. Today we are back with another Dragon Ball figure news video. Of course, the bi-weekly series where we take a look at everything that has happened within the last two weeks related to Dragon Ball figure news. We got some cool stuff for you today, some updates on a lot of figures we've been taking a look at recently. And uh, where the heck is Super Saiyan 2 Gohan, the prize figure that we have been waiting for? I'm not too sure. So let's go ahead and hop into everything today as well once we get to Baggy's Twitter after looking at the dbzfigures.com section. I got a little bit of an update for you that I'll need to explain. So let's go ahead and hop into it here. <sighs> Gotta blow the dust off my glasses. Oh my gosh. <sighs> Sorry, I got some so much like gunk on here. I gotta wipe these off after the video. Anyway, so... Starting us off, of course, on dbzfigures.com, we did have the release of the SH Figure Arts Super Saiyan 4 Vegeta in Japan. Obviously, this guy has not released in the US yet. I believe he comes out next month, but of course, having a Japanese release already, this guy has been released and you can actually take a look at him online. Of course, if you would like to check out your favorite unboxing channel's version of this, that would probably be the way to do it. I know myself, the boy 86 review. Reviews. He always reviews new Dragon Ball SH figure arts uh, figures. Highly recommend his channel. But interestingly enough, Bandai Namco is actually doing their own official reviews um, of figures now when they come out, which is actually pretty neat. I'm not gonna lie. Like, it's kind of cool that a company would actually go ahead and, you know, do their own, like, official unboxings, basically, of a figure. I think that's kind of neat, honestly, because obviously, um, it's not really something that I've heard done before, so I think it's pretty cool. If you want to take a more detailed look at the figure, definitely this would be the way to do it. This way doesn't really give you like a super fantastic review of the figure. It's just kind of like a decent overview with some pretty cool shots and stuff like that. But I do have to say from these couple of basic things, he does look pretty good. I am excited to get my hands on this guy, especially to put in with my Super Saiyan 4 Goku, which is one of my favorite figures of all time. It'll be interesting to see if they do release any more GT SH Figure Arts figures as well. Um, I am quite excited to see if they do. I don't know what else they would do. I mean, like, I guess Omega Shinron Baby and Super 17 would probably be the easy characters that come to mind besides, like, GT Goten and Gohan and stuff like that. Maybe GT Pan. I don't know. But obviously, the Super Saiyan 4s are the most popular thing from GT. So probably Gogeta. I mean, that one I should have said first, to be honest with you. But anyhow... Moving on from the boy Super Saiyan 4 Vegeta, kind of funny that this is coming out um, around the same time as the anniversary gets announced that it has a Super Saiyan 4 Vegeta. We do have the Ichiban show for the Frieza's army. We talked about this set a couple of times on the figure news videos here. And you can cop these guys from the Big Bad Toy Store. You uh, probably can see... That uh, these guys are quite expensive. As you can see, Frieza is $70. Zarbon is $90. Oh boy. The Doria is $144. And Kui is $80. Holy cow. You can also see their sizes here. Frieza is 8.7. Zarbon is 10.6. Excuse me. The Doria is 9.8. And Kui is 9.4. All of these inches tall, respectively. Obviously, if you have been, I say obviously a lot, I'm sorry, I think that's just my in-between thought word. If you've been following Dragon Ball figures for a while, you would probably know that these figures, uh, just a couple of years ago, used to basically cost 35 bucks, and then they bumped it up to 36 and now it's just whatever their heart desires. I've stopped trying to keep track because every new Ichiban show, there's no sense to the prices. It's just the figures that are a little bit smaller, a little bit less expensive, but still too way overpriced. Because, like, this one to me makes no sense. Zarbon being $90 and Dodoria being $150. Like, I understand he's thicker and he's wider, but, like, yeesh. 
that is uh, kind of a yikes, if I'm being honest with you. If you want these guys, I would definitely say look into importing them. By the way, that is a video that I'm going to do this year, how to import figures. I know I talked about doing that video last year, and you guys showed some interest in that. So definitely going to look and see if I can't do that. However, if you do want to buy these guys, which I definitely think these prices are a little bit too expensive. Um, but if you want to go for it, they are here on the Big Bad Toy Store. Speaking of which, Big Bad Toy Store just announced pre-orders. For the superhero Ichiban show, these of course being the one with the Gohan Beast, Cell Max, and Orange Piccolo figures that we talked about. Figure pricing is varied and will be available in August 2023 through the Big Bad Toy Store. So Piccolo is going to be $85, Gohan Beast is going to be $60, Cell Max $105, Gotenks and Gotenks $60, and Majin Buu $90. These are really really expensive prices if i'm being honest with you um and we will take a look by the way at the multi angles for these because baggy has them posted later so we'll take a look at them a little bit later in the video gohan is the only one that i think may even be close to reasonable i don't even think it is to be honest but the rest of these are just insane it's crazy how expensive these figures have gotten over the years i'm definitely going to try and import these if anything um, because honestly at that point that is the way less expensive way of going about these like this figure is almost eight inches tall with go tanks and the boo is 10.5 but 90 dollars for boo for a figure that's about the size of the grandista line and at least back in the day i mean granted that line is usually around 30 bucks now which is still okay it's better than 90 right used to be a 20 dollars figure line for you know arguably better quality is just insane to me that the prices have gotten this bad with this type of stuff so if you want to cop it from the big bad toy store you can and you will get the figure but just know obviously you know it's not really their fault that the figures are so expensive obviously you know the msrp of these is going up so you know of course they have to allocate um you know it's bandai that's the problem it's not the big bad toy store but yeah so there you go if you would like to cop the pre-order on these by the way for the heights for the rest of them gohan is almost eight inches tall piccolo is 10.5 cell max is 11 and then we already talked about go tanks and boo so the other thing that i wanted to talk about real quick before we got into the rest of this is uh baggy has recently locked his twitter account as you can see it has the little lock on it which means that if you are not following him, you obviously, you know, won't be seeing his tweets because his account is locked. And if he doesn't accept you as one of the followers, then of course you're not going to be able to see the tweets. Now, obviously he doesn't care if I show you the tweets for the figure news video. However, the problem is not really baggy, but Twitter is the problem. Because, unfortunately, which you guys have probably seen if you've been watching my recent figure news videos, you usually are able to copy the link to a tweet like this, right? This is obviously not a tweet from Baggy, it's just a retweet from this account right here, right? And you could copy the tweet and open it into a new tab. However, if we try to copy one of Baggy's tweets because his account is locked, it will just say bookmark and you can't actually copy the link because, you know, then the link wouldn't matter because if you're not following, you couldn't view the tweet anyway kind of thing. So Twitter doesn't let you copy the links to tweets, you know, for tweets that are from locked accounts. So uh, my uh, unfortunate thing for this, right, you don't even have an option here to copy the link. My uh, kind of unfortunate news for you then is we are going to go back to the way that we were doing this before, which I'm going to try and do my best to cut out the in-between sections where we're scrolling for a little bit, um, just so then that way, you know, it won't be all this in-between, you know, fluff that isn't really necessary. But we are basically just going to have to scroll through Baggy's Twitter like we did um, when I was doing figure news videos like last year or two years ago. Um... And we're just gonna well i mean i guess technically two years ago now because you know last year was like a couple weeks ago but you, you understand what i'm trying to say like you know earlier 2022 and 2021 we're just gonna have to scroll through his twitter account so let's go ahead and get into it ladies and gentlemen first of all we have some more in-person pictures of the boy gx materia boo 
every time I see this figure, I feel like I just like it more and more. Man, I cannot wait to get my hands on this thing. Boo is definitely a character that is severely lacking within my collection. Look at that, bro! Oh! So good. The boy Varroke does not disappoint whatsoever with these figures. Oh, thank you, Twitter. I, I appreciate you not loading the image, dog. Thank you. <laughs> Either way, though, yeah, this guy looks absolutely fantastic. I honestly think the only thing that they could have done to improve this figure would maybe have been tilt his head a little bit more to the side, like in the anime. That would have been it, but honestly, I still think the figure looks fantastic regardless, bro. It looks so good. Here is the promotional poster. I don't know why everything is loading so slow today. And it looks really good. I really like these promotional posters for these figures. I have a couple of them myself from these Japanese arcade uh, claw machines. Because you can see, right, like they put them in the background. Uh, here is a good example, right? Obviously, you can see this exact poster in the background of the machine. That's kind of like, you know, oh, here's the advertisement of what's in the machine, which is pretty cool. Um, so we have the case ratios for uh, the Ichiban Kuji. This is basically when stores get these figures, how many of each of these figures are they going to get, right? As you can see for the regular Gohan Beast, two, Orange Piccolo, one, Cell Max, one, Gotenks, two, other Gotenks, one, which is kind of weird that the Super Saiyan one would get more, but whatever, and then Boo one. And for the smaller prizes, which is G, H, and I, they have 15, 24, and 33, respectively. Yeah, it, it is really weird. And Baggy makes a fair point here. Um, we have a Gotenks figure, funny enough, in literally the same pose, releasing a month before, right? It is kind of silly that they are deciding to release a Gotenks in this set. I don't know. I feel like Bandai does this a lot. Like, I remember even a couple years ago, there was a time where they released an Ichiban Kuji, uh, Big Bang, Kamehameha, Super Saiyan 4 Gogeta, and they released, it was like a month before or after, a Bampresto prize figure of it. I was like, why don't they coordinate this? But I don't understand. And now with Bampresto being owned by Bandai, it makes even less sense. So I don't know. Just kind of silly, um, to be honest with you on that one. A quick confirmation of no Gohan Beast Kuji in Europe for the Ichiban Show variant of it, which obviously, if you're unfamiliar, Ichiban Show basically just means where you can buy the figures outright rather than playing the lottery for them like you have to do in Japan. Speaking of the boy Varquo, Varok, still don't know how to pronounce his name. Here is his official tweet on Boo. He always likes to make a tweet about the figure that he is working on, which is pretty cool. If we hit up the old Google Translate here, appearing from the 11th Dragon Ball Z material. Wow, Dragon Ball GX material has 11 figures now? Wow, that's crazy. Majin Buu is in charge of production, and it will be a reproduction of the technique released by Buu. His pants and the wrinkles at the corner of his mouth are deeply carved to make the shadows easier to understand. Thank you. Very, very cool stuff here, obviously, in showing the original reference material with the manga in the background. He always likes to do this where he sort of shows the original material and whatnot um, next to the figure. It kind of gives you a little bit of a description and some detail about it, which is pretty cool. And um, it's nice to see, right? Because obviously, when it comes to this type of stuff, you know, we are so disconnected from the creation process of it and getting to see and hear from the people who actually make these figures a lot of the time. That's why I always love the Bampresta World figure coliseum because you know they got interviews with all of the people who made figures for bandai and entered that contest and stuff like that so it's always cool to see you know an individual who is so deeply rooted in dragon ball figures uh you know talking about it constantly which is really cool whenever he pumps out a new figure obviously Varok has basically made i think he may have made every single one i don't remember if he was like the first goku or not um but he basically is in charge of the GX material line in terms of the sculpt and whatnot. And every single time, I think he kills it, bro. There's been like one or two that I've been like, eh, but I don't think there's ever been a figure I've disliked from the GX material line. So good work as always, my man. You love to see it. By the way, the smaller prizes for the Gohan Beast Ichiban Kuji. Prize G will be a tumbler, which I assume will be some kind of cup. Um, a, pri a layer standard, I'm not exactly sure what that is, I assume that's probably a clear file, like we get a lot of the time in the Ichiban Kujis, and then the final one is Towels. 
Hopefully they have a Gohan Beast towel because if they do, I will buy that and immediately hang that up in my room. We have a better look at the Super Saiyan Blue versus Golden Frieza art from the back of the Dragon Stars Battle Pack. It's always so cool to see some of Fenyo's work represented on these. Funny enough, this Goku highly reminds me of the Dokkan Battle Summon one. I know that's not what it's supposed to be, but it just kind of reminds me of it because of the angle. And we do have uh, some pictures. I'm not exactly sure where these came from, but uh, oh, yikes. Obviously, this is the Super Saiyan Gohan from the Ichiban Kuji with King Cold. And this is a $50 figure right here. Yeah, this uh, this type of quality is definitely not what we're looking for with a $50 figure. If this was like a $20 figure or even like a $25 figure, then I think I would be a lot more inclined to be like, all right, this looks okay. But for a $50 figure, this does not look high quality whatsoever. What is happening with Gohan's mouth? I... <laughs> the deep cuts are so weird. The paint job bleeds over, bleeds over, excuse me, rather. But his ears also look so weirdly cut and lopsided. Especially the hair, too. The hair looks very, like, blocky, almost like cheese. It just doesn't look painted very well it looks like they used very cheap paint for this yeah 50 bucks definitely is uh not worth it for this figure in my opinion i wanted to highlight this tweet real quick because i think this is definitely a good example of what i'm talking about when it comes to the price increase of a lot of this type of stuff right the king cold right this guy from the sichiban kuji with the mecha frieza is a hundred bucks for the ichiban show price right and this cell right here is double the size, right? This figure is about a foot tall. I literally have it on the shelf almost next to my desk over here. I look at it like every day when I leave my room. It's a very nice figure. But it was half the price of King Cole. This was a $50 figure for about one foot tall. And this man is half the size for $100. This is what I'm talking about with these price increases being absolutely ridiculous. Another update on the boy Boo. This is pretty cool. He is currently at 768 game stations, beating Vegito by four, which is awesome. And crazy to think that with the prize figures, they also got a small increase as well. And Boo still got that many orders to all these different places with that price increase being present. So that's pretty cool. There wasn't any doubt that the GX material line should be here for the considerable future. So hopefully we do indeed get more villains and non-saints. That would be awesome. As well, this was another little update on the Super Saiyan 2 Gohan shenanigans. The June uh, prize figure images didn't drop last week, unfortunately. Only Naruto and a few others, excuse me. But they should drop any day between now and the end of the month. So we'll just have to be patient and hope it drops sooner than later. That was on the 15th and I'm currently recording this on the 21st. So hopefully um, we do get these images soon. This was something interesting. We have some examples of some of the smaller prize uh, that you can get with the Ginyu Force Ichiban Kuji. We've taken a look at this Ichiban Kuji set a couple of times now. Let's go ahead and kind of zoom in here because it is a little bit hard to see what all of this stuff is. Keep in mind, because this image is kind of low quality, it is going to be a little bit difficult to tell um, what this stuff is. But it looks like here we have, first of all, a crate. I think they have done these a couple of times. They kind of remind me of like ammo cases, right? Kind of interesting that they're doing these little boxes again. This right here either looks like mini towels or this kind of looks like a mask with the straps, but I think that's just the way that the logo is constructed. So I would say that these are towels. They have been doing these for a ton of Ichiban Kujis lately, so it would make sense if that's the case. One with the entire Ginyu Force on there, which is pretty cool. And another one with Ginyu Goku, which is more like the washcloth type of size, which makes sense for these being towels. We have some cups. You can see 
that this one right here is Ginyu teaching Goku how to pose, which is a pretty cool design for a cup. I actually really like that. I might try to get one because that's so funny. And we also have some kind of manga panels here. I'm assuming it's something with the Ginyu Force. It's kind of hard to make out because obviously, you know, this image is so small. And we also do have some kind of zip-up bags. It's kind of difficult to tell what these are, but it seems like that this is a soft fabric. And you can tell that there is a zipper on the top of these. This one being that classic art of Bulma, Gohan, and Krillin. Obviously arriving on Namek where it says Dragon Ball in the background. And then this says the Ginyu Force. And I am assuming that this is an image of the Ginyu Force. So yeah, pretty cool if I do say so myself. Very, very interesting. We do have some more shenanigans here with some scans from the most recent V-Jump. We do have the upcoming February item Gashapon. Obviously, um, we have been getting these for a little while where they have these little Gashapon machines. That's the type of thing where you put a quarter in there, you crank it, and then obviously you get a little prize out of there. We have some different items from Dragon Ball history. We have the Dragon Balls themselves. We have the Dragon Radar, the Cell Shell, and the Frieza Pod, as well as Kinto Un and Noibo, which is pretty cool if I do say so myself. We have the wafer stickers, which is pretty cool. Obviously, I'm not going to stick on these too long because they're not figures. But we do get figures based off of these stickers. So it would be get cool to get these two as a figure. That would be super awesome. Um, and we do have some more examples of stuff here. Very, very nice, if I do say so myself. And speaking of, we actually have the Wafer Stickers 07 in the V-Jump here that you can see these very nice high-quality images of them, including the Gammas, the poster for the Gohan and Piccolo, and of course, you have the Goku and Frieza from Namek, as well as the Gohan standing on top of the dragon. This is pretty cool, I will say, because with this minifigure, right, obviously in the poster, um, I believe the actual poster for the movie is regular Gohan and Piccolo. So it is kind of cool that it's more akin to the Dokkan one, actually, because on the story event for this, um, it is um, Piccolo Awakened and the caped Piccolo. Um, so that is pretty cool, actually. I really, really like that a lot. And we do have Dragon Ball Adverge 16 is going to release April 15th in Japan. I definitely want to try and get my hands on these. I'm not a super big collector of Dragon Ball Adverge. I do have like three of them. I have a little Gogeta Blue that stands on my graphics card in my PC. I have a little Super Saiyan 3 Goku on my desk and a little Super Saiyan 3 Go tanks in the back. But, um, obviously, I really, really like this movie, and so I would love to collect more figures from it. And since Bandai's regular offerings of uh, the Kuji figures seem very hard to acquire, and obviously, we have a lot of shenanigans going on with the Van Presto figures right now, these may actually be the best way to go. So, going to be interesting to see if I can get my hands on these for sure. And I think there was one more thing up here. Yeah, so this is really interesting. Apparently, the UK is now getting Ichiban Kuji's proper, which is really interesting. Um, apparently, it will be about 20 euros for a ticket. And you're probably more than likely um, to obviously get one of the small prizes when it comes to that. Keep in mind, for the very limited places in the U.S., it costs $19 a ticket with only a 10% chance to pull a figure. With everything else, obviously, you've basically lost money, which is uh, pretty unfortunate. But yeah. Obviously, it's kind of ridiculous that for a ticket for this, it's uh, that expensive. Funny enough, actually, I have the uh, <laughs> I have the Deku from this Ichiban Kuji, actually, which is kind of funny. This is another tweet that I just wanted to talk about real quick. Yeah, this is uh, kind of unfortunate, honestly. Obviously, you can see here, this is the Frieza Ichiban Kuji figure that we're getting in the Kuji that we've been talking about in this video. And it is 70 bucks, and they did not even paint the controls on his control panel and as you can see the old figureized standard one not only had him able to come out of the pod obviously this figure is articulated but it was fully painted on the inside and i understand that this is a model kit and the you know like Differences between the two are because of the different types of figures, but this is just the standard right here I believe right? I don't think that this is actually somebody went in and hand-painted I believe this is just how it is out of the box, right? 
And uh, that's the result that you get with the uh, Ichiban Kuji one, and he also can't come out of the actual pod. $30 difference, I think, is kind of ridiculous for that one, honestly. We have some more pictures of the Solid Edgeworks trunks. I know a lot of people are really excited about these guys. I definitely want to cop these guys if I can. Very interesting stand. I don't think I've ever seen Bandai use a stand like this before for a prize figure. Definitely not opposed to it whatsoever. Um, I like it because it's so much smaller. I do kind of wish it was black, though, just because I feel like it would blend in with the figure a lot more and it wouldn't kind of stick out as much. But yeah, these guys look really, really cool. And here is the poster as well, if you are curious for these guys. Definitely very, very nice looking. Alrighty, this is what I was looking for here. We have the HQ multi-angle pictures of this upcoming Ichiban Kuji. First on the list, we have the boy orange Piccolo. He looks very, very good. I am really excited to get my hands on this guy. I kind of thought that his face looked a little bit weird from the front facing angle, but this angle, I think it's just because of the fact that his head is tilted down. It's kind of harder to tell. When you look at it from like this, I think this is pretty much spot on orange Piccolo. I really like how this looks. I will say his hands are kind of interesting that they decided to like make it this weird curled finger thing like i don't quite mind it but i'm pretty sure that he has his fingers like clenched in a fist during this scene so i don't know it's just kind of an interesting decision i will say one thing that is a little bit unfortunate to notice about the back of this figure is if we close this one real quick you can see that this seems to just be like a sticker or something like that, right? It doesn't really feel like it's actually painted on, like it's a decal of some kind. I don't think it's actually a sticker that you'll be able to peel off, but you can see the actual edges of this on the back of the figure, which is a real shame because obviously that is, uh, you know, qu quite an obvious, uh, obvious thing that they did not, you know, really even try to try and properly incorporate it in the figure, whereas some older figures, they definitely, um, you know, would do that a lot better with some kind of symbol on their back, you know, on Goku's gi or what have you. Kind of unfortunate, because look at how dark that is there, and you can even see the purple edges, right? It almost looks like this was spray painted on, kind of, but just like a poorly done job. Regardless, though, this figure still definitely looks very good, and I am definitely excited to try and get my hands on it. Here is the boy Super Boo. Again, I'm actually pretty excited for this figure. Um, I have no Super Boo collection, or no Super Boo collection. I mean, I guess that's true. No figures in my Super Boo collection whatsoever. His back looks really nice. Holy cow. I love the baggy pants on him as well. Definitely going to try and cop this guy if I can. Um, he's definitely not like top priority or anything like that, but I have no Boo figures, so it would be nice to get some in my collection for sure. I really like the gauntlets. I think that's my favorite part about this figure. They really did a good job with those. Here is the Boy Gohan Beast. As you can see here, obviously, this is the open palm one. We don't have multi-angles of the last one prize version, it seems. Um, but I don't think we usually get those. So, I mean, this is basically the same figure, though. Besides, obviously, the change in the hand and the face, this guy looks fantastic. I really, really like how big the hair is. This is the angle that I was really hoping to see, was this side angle from Gohan. And, oh my gosh, the hair is ridiculous ridiculous which is perfect because obviously this is accurate to the movie this is just insane dude holy cow i was really hoping that the hair was super long look at that bro oh my gosh because obviously from this front facing angle right like it's kind of hard to tell with the way that it is but because obviously he has like these front spikes and then the back ones just kind of like shoot backward but you can tell even here, it is very bushy, I will say. I feel like it's a lot more bushy than it is in the movie on this figure. It's a lot more like pushed out to the sides, I guess, rather than almost just like straight up, right? But I like it. It's very wild, very crazy. I think it looks pretty good if I do say so myself. Um, I'm excited to see some final images of this guy for sure. We have Cell Max here, my man rocking the Tims, of course. Definitely wanted to see some more angles of this guy. I wish his tail was bigger because this big, like, um, what would you even call that? Like his mace tail or something like that, right? Definitely was a lot bigger than this in the movie. So it's kind of a shame uh, to see that that is the case here. However, it definitely looks like the person who has been sculpting the, I keep forgetting his name, the sculptor's name. 
the guy who's been sculpting a lot of the monster Ichiban Kuji figures, right? Like the Shinrons and the Great Apes and stuff like that. Um, your big boy cell figures. It looks like he sculpted this guy as well. So it makes sense why the sculpting style looks the way that it does because it seems to be his work. Very, very cool stuff though. I kind of wish that Cell's wings and tail were bigger though. That's kind of my only complaint with this figure. Otherwise, I think it looks pretty good. Um, I wish there was a more like up angle to see how long the wings really were because they are kind of hard to tell here. It also sort of just looks like that the wings are glued on. So it'll be interesting to see how they're actually incorporated into the figure because I feel like they're not attached. It kind of looks like they're just pegged in. So that'll be interesting to see. And then... We do have the Go Tanks here. Obviously, this is the Super Saiyan one. We have the base form one. We have another angle of the base form one, and then the back of the base form one. Personally, I think the Super Saiyan one looks better if I had to pick. Um, but obviously, we are getting literally a prize figure version of this one that is going to be way cheaper just a month before this comes out. So I, I would say just cop that one if you're going to get either one. But overall, I do quite like this Ichiban Kuji. Definitely let me know your thoughts in the comments section below. I think my favorite figure from this has to be Gohan Beast. Like, I know that that should be obvious, but obviously you've been waiting so long for a Gohan Beast figure, right? That, I mean, it makes sense that it would be him. But honestly, low-key, it might be Super Boo for the next one just because he looks so good. Then I would say it's Orange Piccolo from there. I don't know. I really like this figure, and obviously the pose is when he's walking forward, but the hand thing is just so weird to me. Like, why did they pick this position for the hands? I don't know. It doesn't, like, look bad necessarily. It's just a very interesting choice, I think, for sure. Alrighty, it looks like we have reached the end of our figure news for today, since Baggy's Twitter has no more offerings for us. It will be interesting to see what we end up with in terms of the boy Super Saiyan 2 Gohan, like I said, I will do a video when those drop, considering I am sure that people are excited for those figures. And I have been waiting for them too. I guess we're just going to have to wait another week. I mean, surely they should be coming this week. I will be kind of mad if I make this video, edit it, upload it tomorrow, and then the figures drop tomorrow. I'm not going to lie. Your boy will be a little bit salty. I ain't even going to front with you. But hopefully that doesn't happen. Uh, we'll just have to see. Time will tell. But let me know what you're excited for out of all of the figures in today's video. I am personally very excited for the Ichiban Kuji, even though it is obviously super overpriced. Price, I think that honestly importing it has just got to be the way to go um, because obviously you know that is going to be a way cheaper alternative to getting some of these figures. But thank you guys so much for watching. Let me know what you're excited for in the comment section below. And as always, thank you so much for watching, and I will catch you in the next one. Tokonasets out. Peace.